Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM, so self-explanatory is that, and my goodness, crazy, massive, big week for EDM, tons of great tracks, tons of huge names this week, uh, so let's get into it. As always, there's a Spotify link in the playlist down below for all the songs and easy access if that's your uh, way of doing it, and remember, this is just my opinion. These are just my opinions as we are hopping into the trash category, songs that I think are genuinely trash. Uh, we've got Timmy Trumpet and Bass Jackers with classical music. The uh, <laughs> There is... Uh, classic music and everything, even in hard style, uh, is the tagline of this track, and it's just, wow, uh, horribly misunderstood, not even classical, you'd think that in a song called classical music, there'd be more classical elements, but no, it's just kind of a background melody here and there, and it's mainly just talked about, not even lived out in the production, just horrendous. Then we got Little Texas with Peanut Butter Jelly. Uh, this is literally just a hard style mix of the original Peanut Butter Jelly meme song, like the Peanut Butter Jelly with a baseball bat. Like it's that's literally what this is. Um, it's redundant, outdated, processed to hell, and uh, phew, it's 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 just crass. And we're moving into the bad category songs that I thought are bad, not as trash, but at least still not that great. Uh, we got Dylan Francis and Space Rangers featuring Sophie Powers with Don't Waste My Time. A uh, quick hit of Big Room House with a minimalism that sounds more empty than it does stylistic um, with, yeah, just means like there's really not much happening on this track. It sounds nicer than some of the other Dylan Francis stuff as of late, but still not that great. We got Wooly and Kill the Noise featuring Takura with Make It Wobble. This is just an odd track. Uh, Wooly and Kill the Noise's production sounds messy with pretty flat mixing, and Takura's vocals don't really bring any energy to the track, and it sounds like they were just recorded uh, and they just went with the first take, and they're just like, great, two minutes in and out, and that was it. So it just doesn't feel like there's tons of life in this song. Then we got You Not Us, Sam Felt, and Martin Garrix featuring Sam Gray with 24K Heart of Gold. Wow. Uh, <laughs> lame Slap House with really weak vocal performance um, makes this a track that just doesn't really go anywhere. Um, it has a lot of big names on it, but it's just boring for all these producers and features being on this one. And uh, yeah, that's what I think of that. Then we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were uh, meh. Maybe you will like them more than me. We've got Sully and Effin with the Satisfied VIP from the new The uh, Altered Underground remix package from Sully's 2023 record. And um, this is uh, like a more visceral take on the original, taking on a heavier tone. But with the short runtime and linear movements, this felt like a kind of unneeded VIP in the end. Um, even if it was sonically, I think, stronger than the original was. But that's that. Then we got Pnow with Nostalgic, the new Hyperbolic LP is out now from Pnow, and uh, this is new commercial deep house from Pnow, and it's a big nothing burger. Uh, I don't mind the sonic direction the song took, um, in fact, I actually liked where it was trying to go, uh, but just found the lack of extended movements or a bridge to be a real miss on the track and uh, to have it not really go anywhere in the end. Then we got Automate and Sudden Death with Tormento. Uh, well, heavy rhythm enjoyers, here you go. This is a track for you. Um, I'm sure this is like two gods collaborating in the rhythm world, but uh, to me, it's just fairly generic, abrasive, loud, processed rhythm. And so I think that's just meh. Uh, and then we've got Infect with Beams. Infect has made his Monster Cat debut uh, and brought out some of the wonkiest rhythm to do it with. And uh, this is definitely the in-your-face uh, and sonically quite rough track, but um, it's definitely a nicher listen and uh, one that, again, didn't really resonate with me personally, but one that I did think was a neat track for sure. But uh, this is one that I think maybe could have landed in good, but I don't know, something about it. Then we got Cage with the Azure Dragon uh, track, I guess, from the Four Symbols EP that's out now. Uh, this new track has a lot going for it, but ultimately sounds like it's two competing tracks. Uh, the bass line is very dense, and the melody is just too bright, honestly, and they feel like they just juxtapose each other rather than complementing one another. Um, it's minimalistic bass house, and maybe you'll enjoy it more than me, but uh, yeah, even for a longer song, I just was a little disappointed in this one. You got Kaizo with I Can Dance, or Kaiza, I should say, with I Can't, I Go Dance. Uh, comparatively from the last single uh, from Kaiza, this, in this new album cycle, this track is quite boring. It's another simplistic kind of deep house cut with a bright synth melody and vocals, but overall was bogged down by its simplicity rather than having it stick out like an earworm. There's some songs where the, where the simple beat and melody really keep it going, like, yes, this is what I wanted, I just want more of this. This one was just like, nah, I didn't really care for it. 
And we got Chami, Mala, and Disco Lines with 1984. The new Veni, Vidi, Vici LP is out now from Chami and Mala. And uh, this is just a pure, clean house track. It's got an energetic vibe to it, um, but without anything really happening or surrounding the track uh, holistically, I would say. Um, it's just a meh track. Like This is like the definition of just like a house song, I would say, is this one right here. Uh, then we got Resurrect with Dread, a fairly diverse dubstep track, I would say, that leans more into Britom and hard techno than anything else, I would say. But um, yeah, it comes with a minimalistic and dark overtone to it, but it uh, wasn't too hot on this list for me personally. Um, it's one of those tracks that I can appreciate, but won't really listen to a whole lot. And uh, that's how I feel about that. A lot of songs in Mad this week, actually, I think, are like that for me. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were pretty solid. We've got Panda Eyes with Stardust Galaxy. Um, as do most of the newer Chompo tracks, this one sounds like an electro version of a kind of uh, Mario soundtrack song or like something you'd hear from like Mario Kart, but uh, with a splash of dubstep. Uh, it's cheery, it's chippy, it's really fun, and I enjoyed it. We got Eptic, Uber, and Neonix with Moon Vision. Uh, pretty huge dubstep club here that sounds uh, very much like a culmination of all three artists' sounds. You can really hear each individual artist. Uh, they're, they're kind of more, yeah, iconic synth or bass line like, runs in the whole song. And so I thought it was a great collaboration in that sense. Um, yeah, but I, I, it was the more I would listen to this, I think the more I enjoyed it for how playful it was uh, in the end. So, uh, yeah, it's got that kind of like high synth and run that Eptic and uh, Neonix love to play with, uh, but also that kind of bass line and bridge that Uber uh, so often brings to his track. So um, I thought this was a great balance of it all. We got Protostar with Stay. Uh, this is a longer, more drawn-out liquid DNB from Proto here with a heavy emphasis on the vocal chops. Uh, it's a little bit more chilled out than some of his other DNB stuff, but I still really enjoyed this. Um, this is much more of like a journey of a style track than it is like just a straight banger. And so still good. Then we've got Seven Lions and Elenium featuring as this with uh, Not Even Love. Seven Lions and Elenium, new progressive house. What? No more like fusion rock, no more melodic dubstep. Uh, progressive house, I guess, for at least this, this one track. And um, it's a big switch up for these two, obviously. And I thought it. It worked quite well. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was fairly vanilla for the most part, but that final drop had an extra kick and stutter to it that just worked really well. And so much so that I wish that was the first drop, and then it got even more expansive on the other end. But um, I still really enjoyed it and was quite satisfied with this track. Then we got Aha Dream or Aha Da Dream and uh, Priya Ragu and Skrillex with Taka. Uh, Skrillex kind of sneaky dropped this new track this week and not much fanfare. We kind of saw some teasers online about it for a long time now, but uh, stylistically, this is very quite similar to Xena from the Quest for Fire album. This is pretty much a spiritual successor to it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of got that trap beat with the Eastern drums to it. And it doesn't really have that multi phase big movements like Xena does, uh, but it's still a great track. Then we've got Medicine and Elijah Fox with Gone with the Wind. The new Sounds LP is out now from Medicine. And uh, Atmosphere is the name of the game here as they take us on a journey through sound with little synth plucks and guitar chords scattered all throughout. Um, it's very kind of serene, just sit back and soak kind of track. And uh, I enjoyed it. The rest of the LP is very much like that as well. Then we got Devault featuring Niorma, I want to say that, with uh, <laughs> Fire to Stone. Um, refreshing big room sounds here uh, with stuttering synths and vocal chops. Uh, if like dance was like a real genre and not just like an overall encompassing thing, this is what it would sound like, I think. This is this is what the definition of, I think, like a, a dance song. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Then we got Casbo featuring Frida Sandemo with This Is It, a softer Casbo track that is purely progressive house. Uh, I would say I wish Frida actually had some more vocal parts throughout. Um, I thought her performance was great. The vocal chops were really nice as well. But um, yeah, I just thought she wasn't as highlighted as much as I wish she would have um, as much as Casbo has in the past with tracks uh, with her. So uh, yeah, this is just another more atmospheric cut from Casbo in, in anticipation for the new album coming out soon. Then we got Sleepnet with Laps. Uh, if you don't know, Sleepnet is one third of Noisia, I believe, from the past that it's they have now broken up, I guess, and that's why it's kind of Sleepnet and Noisia online on this one. I don't know why they did that, but um, yeah, this is a dark and gloomy drum and bass uh, with a muted bass line and gritty kick all throughout. Um, there's just this level of intentional distortion all over the place that really ties the whole soundscape together and gives this kind of creepy underground tone that I think worked really well. 
Then we got Scro and Underbelly with Change. Uh, the Scro Belly LP is out now. Obviously, Scro Underbelly, Scro Belly. And, uh, and this track in particular is glitchy, it's visceral, it's chaotic, and yet also clean at the same time. Um, lots of syncopation and swing hits, uh, and I it, it just makes for a very unique listening experience, I must say more so than anything, um, no doubt about it. Uh, personally, my favorite off the album that I've heard so far, so go listen to new Scro Belly now. Then we got Grabbits with the Sky Turns Red track from the new kind of Walking Dead, the Lost Ones, like mini series spinoff part. I don't know what it is exactly. I've, I'm out of date with my Walking Dead lore, but um, this is from a soundtrack from, I guess, whatever that is. But uh, yeah, as a uh, soundtrack song is, this makes perfect sense. Um, I've heard some people say that it's a little bit more boring, but I think that's because it's meant to be a secondary piece of media. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be listening to a primary piece of media like the show, and this is supposed to be the supporting act to it and I think it did an absolutely marvelous job of that um yeah there are some soundtrack songs that I just like fall in love with immediately uh and this was I would say one of them I think the writing is great and uh I think rabbits actually absolutely killed it then we got no mana vowel and Layla diamond die I want to say diamond die or is it diamond d Diamond Die? Diamond Die makes sense to me, but uh, Fallen in Love is the name of this new track, and No Mana is continually switching up their style to great success. This track has a more straightforward progressive house beat to it, um, with a really commanding baseline sustain that gives the whole thing this real power. Uh, it reminds me a lot of a like classic Dead Mouse track, uh, more so than anything. And No Mana has reminded me a lot of Dead Mouse in the past, but especially with this track, for sure. Then we've got Blank and AU5 with Turmoil. The Emergence EP is out now on Monster Cat from Blank. Um, and this has got to be one of the best Blank tracks I think I've heard in a long time. Uh, AU5 and Blank bounce off each other so marvelously as they ebb and flow through various dubstep subgenres and styles. Um, each throw And then, yeah, throwing in like this like pseudo psytrance finale as well that I think worked actually quite well. Um, I just thought this track was fantastic. Uh, even I even liked it better than the Grant song. And I, and I love it. Love Grant. He's one of my favorite artists of all time, so it's fantastic. But speaking of fantastic, we've got two tracks in standout this week as we move into the standout category. Um, Turmoil just missed out, but Justice did not. Justice and Miguel with Saturn 9. Um, the fourth single from Justice's upcoming record with uh, Miguel here on this track uh, is their like big commercial hit. I think more often than not, Justice has like a big kind of more commercial, straightforward track, and this is it. Um, and in an odd twist of fate, this is my favorite cut of the singles yet. Um, Miguel's vocals are smooth as always, and Justice's more commercial electro house design or sound design might actually be their sweet spot um and i mean there's always that funk element that justice adds and it's just marvelous so um i've heard a lot of people say that they think this one is pretty just meh and i think that makes sense um for the most part but something about the song i just fell in love with over and over again so and uh yeah that's it for the week uh there was nothing else that came out um no, yeah, a Porter Robinson cheerleader. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, Porter, Porter Robinson is back. And uh, yeah, this is uh, absolutely incredible. Um, I don't know what you want to call it. Pop punk, um, J-pop, hyper pop, synth pop. I don't know what it is exactly, electro pop. It's, it's a lot of everything in one sound and it is fantastic. Um, I cannot wait to see where this rest of the album goes sonically. Um, this narrative league, this song in particular talks about parasocial relationships and the kind of give and take that they provide with a uh, person and fans. And so, or artists and fans, I should say. Um, I'm not sure I've fallen in love with a song as quickly as I have in a long time as I have with Cheerleader. And um, that melody is already iconic in the EDM's uh, landscape. So uh, yeah, that was it for this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But uh, other than that, I'm Dakota from Botan Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.